Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to estimate composite reliability basically McDonald's Omega for a one-factor CFA model in Amos using a phantom variable approach. And we are going to be reanalyzing some data associated with this article, three-factor structure for epistemic belief inventory, a cross-validation study, which can be found at the Plus One website. And I'm going to include a link underneath the video description uh, that will take you there if you want to read more. Um, also, under the video description, I will include links to the SPSS data files and Amos files that I'm working with in this presentation, along with uh, a, a short PowerPoint that contains some of the um, slides that I'm going to be covering. So here you can see that we have a one-factor model that's specified, and basically what we're going to be uh, doing is working with uh, items from the EBI or the uh, this epistemic belief inventory. So each of these uh, rectangles right here represents an, an item from the scale that's uh, designed to measure this particular latent variable right here. Now briefly, I'm not going to walk you through all the details of setting up a, uh, a CFA model because I'm going to assume at this point you already know how to do this, but I will include a link to another video on uh, that I put together on CFA if you want to go back and refresh yourselves. Um, so at any rate, the items in this um, in this model right here are representing uh, this IA.FL factor and you know traditionally with the EBI uh, you have items that are measuring sort of a belief in innate ability and others that um, represent sort of beliefs in fast learning or speed of learning. And it turns out that the authors, when they were analyzing their data, the items uh, sort of coalesced into a single factor. And so that's why we're testing this particular model right here. So uh, looking at our factor model, you can see uh, that above our uh, factor, uh, I have fixed a, the uh, factor variance to 1. And uh, this was done for identification purposes. And it's also going to be useful uh, when it comes to estimating our reliability. And uh, so just keep in mind that um, when, that all latent variables and measurement errors uh, have to have a measurement scale associated with them. So one way with our latent uh, factor uh, to uh, set the measurement scale is just to fix the variance to one. Another option is to use a reference indicator approach and essentially fix a path coefficient to one and scale that latent variable in reference to one of, to, to, uh, one of your indicator variables. But we are going to stick with this approach right here uh, for ease and uh, leave our uh, factor variance fixed at one. Now, if we're not going to be using the phantom variable approach, we wouldn't be needing to rely on uh, these equations here. So the phantom variable approach is essentially going to take care of having to go through uh, these different equations uh, manually and, and compute uh, McDonald's Omega. But I do want to briefly kind of show you what's happening in, the, in that computation. So you'll see that I have equation 1 and equation 2. Equation 1 essentially assumes that there are no correlated errors, um, basically no error, no covariances uh, among the error terms um, for the indicators, and then equation 2 does actually make the assumption of uh, correlated errors. So with equation 1 uh, we have omega and it is equal to, you'll see in the numerator, uh, we have the summation operator followed by lambda. That's just, this is just basically saying sum up the unstandardized factor loadings, uh, then square them or square that sum. Uh, so that's all it is to it. Uh, and then in the denominator we have essentially what we had in the numerator plus you'll see it says sum theta ii and basically this is just saying sum up the um, the measurement errors or uniquenesses associated with the indicator variables. Um, now equation two we have um, essentially this addition to the previous equation. Essentially what we're doing right here is summing up the uh, error covariances and then multiplying that uh, sum by 2. And so that's being added to the denominator of this particular formula. So equations 1 and 2 you can use very easily um, um, to compute McDonald's Omega and um, 
they, they would be uh, applicable in those cases where you fix the variance of your factor to one. So if you didn't fi fix your variance, um, the factor variance to one, uh, then you would have to rely on these equations below. So equation one right here uh, in, entails summing the uh, factor loadings and squaring and then multiplying by the factor variance right here and you can see right here there's the factor variance included um, in the equation and then the same goes for uh, equation two down here so you can like I said you can easily set up a spreadsheet in order to compute these things but most folks are not terribly interested in that particular uh, approach so the phantom variable approach will uh, kind of accomplish this a little bit more quickly Okay, so here you can see I've opened up Amos, and this is essentially a one-factor CFA model. That CFA model that we that I was walking you through, uh, just kind of briefly uh, showing you that again we have our indicator variables that are given right here. Uh, the uniqueness is associated with the indicator variables. Our latent factor given right here. And uh, just briefly, uh, if you were uh, wanting to fix that factor variance to one, easily done by right clicking, going to object properties, and you'll see uh, not under text but under parameters that uh, you can uh, set that variance to one. That's all there was to it. So I'll briefly run this analysis just so just to kind of show you what it looks like. And uh, so you can see these are the unstandardized uh, loadings right there. You can see the factor variance fixed to one. And then there's, uh, uh, actually I didn't request standardized estimates. Um, if I wanted those standardized estimates, I can just click on uh, standardized estimates under analysis properties. And then, uh, you know, basically then you've got them right here. Um, so at any rate, let's take a quick look at the general model fit. We'll go to model fit right here and you can see uh, that it's not uh, really the greatest. You can see that our chi-square uh, test is statistically significant and, and that oftentimes is going to be the case, especially with very large samples. Um, you can see though that the TLI and CFI are um, are just, uh, you know, TLI is actually below what you would uh, typically uh, determine for a, an acceptable fitting model. Generally 0.90 or above would be acceptable and that's a little bit below. CFI 0.918, that's, that would be considered acceptable. If you look at the RMSCA, it's 0.06, that's within the acceptable range, um, although it's not a close fit uh, to the data. All right, so now let's kind of look at a respecification uh, using the phantom variable approach. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So you'll notice that basically what we've done uh, is take the original model and then added this phantom variable to it. So basically uh, that variable is created by going over here uh, to draw unobserved variables and clicking on it and then drawing it out um, and uh, right there and then from there adding in uh, paths from each of the indicator variables to that phantom variable. Um, and you'll notice that we also fix each of these path coefficients to one. So if I right click on a given path right here and go to object properties, you'll see the regression weight, it says one. If I do this for each one of these, all of those are fixed to one. And so what's happening is, is that we're instructing the program to, uh, to compute a composite uh, measure uh, from each of these indicator variables. So it'd be uh, analogous to uh, going into SPSS and uh, just taking a um, and using the compute function in order to compute the sum of a set of items associated with a scale. So that's all we're, we're basically doing. So you'll notice that we're not including an error term right here. We could, uh, but we would have to fix that error term to zero. Um, so, but in this case, that's all this phantom variable actually is. It's just essentially a composite of the uh, individual items. And so what we're going to do uh, to generate our reliability estimate is to uh, request uh, a model implied correlation between our latent factor up here and that composite measure which is down here. And then from there uh, all we have to do is to square that model implied correlation. So how do we do that? Well uh, all we have to do is go to analysis properties and we'll you know make sure to click on standardized estimates right here 
and also all implied moments right there. And from there, we will run the run this particular model. And let me also note too that uh, again, this this is going to be uh, included as a link underneath the video description, as well as the data file that I'm working from. And and by the way, in the original article, they kind of use uh, there there's some multi-group stuff, but we're just using the entire set of data from that particular article. So now what we'll do is we will go ahead and click on calculate estimates and so when I do that you'll see it says Amos warnings and it says the following variables are endogenous but have no residual error variables and so it's referring to the phantom variable and that's okay because again that we're not actually trying to account for variation in this all we're trying to do is to create a composite measure uh, and then generate a model implied correlation between our uh, factor variable and that composite measure. So I'm going to click on proceed with the analysis and when we do this if we go back under our um, our output right here look under model fit you can see it's exactly the same as it was before there's our RMSEA of 0.06 our CFI of 0.918 TLI of 0 0.890 and so forth all that uh, in terms of the fit is exactly the same but now what we're going to do is we'll go under estimates and essentially all of these uh, uh, these uh, estimates are going to be the same as well as the previous uh, model so these are the unstandardized loadings uh, and then up here you can see these are the standardized loadings as well uh, now to get our reliability estimate we'll click under matrices and then go to implied for all cor all variables correlation so I'll click on that and so now you can see that we have uh, IA.FL there's our factor variable and then we have right here our uh, uh, our composite measure which is so the correlation between them is 0 0.85455 so getting my little calculator out right here I can just type in 0 0.85455 now if you square a correlation uh, any correlation then what you're going to get is the proportion of shared overlap so essentially then uh, our reliability estimate is going to be uh, the uh, percentage or proportion of shared overlap between our latent factor and our compositional variable. So I'm just going to uh, uh, essentially square this and you can see that our, um, our McDonald's Omega is now 0.730. Now another cool thing that you can do uh, with Amos is you can also use bootstrapping to estimate or come up with an interval estimate for your reliability coefficient. So um, the way that we can do this is if we go back under analysis properties here uh, we can go under the bootstrap tab and you can see I've got options for perform bootstrap so I'll set up uh, perform bootstrap I'll just use uh, 2000 samples uh, you can use your percentile confidence intervals or bias corrected I'll just go ahead and use the bias corrected and I'll set this as a 95 percent confidence interval and then from there I can generate bootstrap uh, mo uh, model implied uh, basically confidence intervals for the model implied um, correlations between our latent factor and our composite measure so uh, I'll click out of here and run that and let me just kind of note too that this will not work if you happen to have uh, missing data in your analysis so if you happen to have missing data you have to click on estimate means and intercepts uh, but when you do that then you'll get an error message if you try to bootstrap so uh, that's just kind of one uh, limitation of the of the program but this data set right here is actually a complete data set so we don't have to worry about that so I'll click on calculate estimates and again I'll proceed with the analysis and again we end up with our same fit and and everything's going to be the same except now if I go under estimates and then go to matrices uh, and then go down to um, our uh, uh, implied for all correlations again we have our um, model implied uh, correlation between the latent factor and the composite measure and then if I scroll down or actually go down to this button right here you can see I've got the bias corrected percentile method and now for the correlations I've got um, essentially a lower bound and an upper bound 
uh, for our, uh, our the um, confidence interval surrounding that correlation. If I just square the lower bound and square the upper bound, then I would have an interval estimate for the reliability measure. Okay, so uh, just really quickly, uh, also, if, if there happens to be missing data, as I've said, what you'll need to, to utilize is uh, this estimate means and intercepts button right here. Uh, so what I thought I would do is just kind of import some data in into uh, the program where there's some missing data on some of the uh, some of our indicator variables. And so here I'm just going to go ahead and import this one. It's got some missing data. We'll click on OK, and we'll go back to Analysis Properties and um, Again, we'll have to click on estimate means and intercepts. So we'll leave our output set up for standardized estimates and, and all implied moments. But for the bootstrap, we'll click off of both of these because, again, we'll end up with an error message if we try to uh, bootstrap uh, with missing data and where, and where we've clicked on this button right here. So when I uh, click on... Uh, when I um, well actually at this point one other thing to note is that a mean structure is being incorporated into the model and so now you'll see uh, this zero appearing above the phantom variable and that's actually where the intercept has been fixed to zero for that particular uh, variable um, but that we have to do something like that in order to get it to run so um, this was done by default so you don't need to do anything uh, by hand but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and calculate estimates and proceed with the analysis here and we'll click our, our uh, output button and then go back under estimates and our matrices uh, and we'll go under uh, correlation matrices and so there's our reliability estimate there okay um, and one other thing that I thought I would uh, show you I'm going to go back to our original data set and uh, let me see if I can find it there it is and uh, we'll click on OK here and I'm going to click off of our estimate means and intercepts. Um, one other thing, uh, if you wanted to specify the model uh, with a um, with an error term for this, you could, uh, but the only thing is is that you would have to basically fix the variance to zero. So uh, I'm going to click on this button here, click right here, we'll right click and name this, we'll just call this, e oops, excuse me, Variance will set this to zero, and then under the text, I'll give it a name. Uh, I'll just call it ERR for error. And uh, when we run our analysis uh, using this particular specification, it works out fine. So um, you can do it both ways. It's going to fit exactly the same. Everything is, is exactly the same as what we had done before. But this is an alternate way of specifying uh, the model and getting it to run. Okay, uh, so that uh, largely uh, uh, basically covers, uh, covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, if you want to read more uh, about um, composite reliability and McDonald's Omega, uh, and also with respect to um, using Amos, you can uh, check out uh, these articles uh, in, uh, that are actually included in the last page of that PowerPoint that's linked up underneath the video description. But in particular, the Amos articles uh, are where Amos is covered is in uh, this article by Hayes and Couts. This is a new article uh, that's just uh, kind of hot off the press. And then this article by Graham from t t uh, 2006. But uh, a lot of the concepts that are discussed, um, you know, there's a lot more depth in terms of uh, discussion of the concepts that I'm really pro providing in this particular video. But um, at any rate, check out the references and um, I appreciate you watching.